in to another episode of Tea Talks brought to you by Black Educators in Dubai. I am so happy right now to have another opportunity for us to just discuss um, what it's like to actually live, work, teach in Dubai and sometimes other parts of the UAE. My name is Jessica Washington. I'm your host during this conversation and I am so pleased to have two guests who've also been working hard here in Dubai. First we have... Marlon. And you're from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Tampa, Florida. Okay, and also? I'm Zepha from San Francisco, well, to be real, Oakland, Oakland, California. <laughs> so before we actually get into this conversation and we're looking at basically if you're sitting in a situation with interviewing with a potential employer, but before we actually start that, I'm just gonna talk to you guys, say, how did you get here? Mm -hmm. What is your story? So what does your story look like? <laughs> So I, um, I, I'm a school principal in the States, and I moved to Kuwait. I worked in Kuwait in school administration for three years. Mm. And then I moved back to San Francisco, worked in San Francisco, but I didn't want to be there. I wasn't happy back in the States. And I got a phone call asking me, was I interested in this opportunity to open a brand new school here in Dubai? So, of course, I was like, when do you need me? <laughs> and they were like, tomorrow. I got about a week of time and right. showed up in Dubai. Okay. So. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to ask a question regarding that, but I want to go to Marlon and your story. Yeah. So I was a teacher um, and an administrator in the States, mm -hmm. and I was tired of going from job to job and didn't really feel like I had a whole lot of stability. Mm -hmm. So I started looking outside of the United States, and I found a job in Abu Dhabi. Okay. Um, it didn't work out, mm -hmm. but it got me in the country. Right. So I was able to find something else, mm -hmm. and I've been in Dubai for almost almost two years now. Oh, well, good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, you also reached on that. I want to kind of go into maybe a question of just coming out here, and from what my experience is, is once you get out here, networking or the job market for you is so much easier to tap into. Um, what do you say about that? Um, is yeah. it really about being here and being able to find the right people in networks? Yeah. I think so for educators in particular. I think there's so many of us here, you know, mm -hmm. who, when you look at black folks in Dubai, probably I'd say 70% of us here are in education. Okay. Now, this is a guess of the numbers. Mm -hmm. I think once you connect with a good community, no matter where you are, what's happening, someone knows something. Mm -hmm. So if it's not me that knows, I may know you have a position at right. your school, and you may not have one, but you know that he yes. may have one. And that's been my experience with how it works when you get here. If you don't have a position before you come, someone knows somebody who can bring you on. There's always an opening here all year long. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a tight circle here mm -hmm. because yeah. there's not that many of us. Yes. Like I, and I was really surprised to see that there's no, there's not a lot of men, black men here. Right. So I don't really have anybody to hang out with. <laughs> so if you're a black man, yeah. <laughs> you want to play basketball with space. Please, please come on, because there's no black men here. It also replicates what you see in the States, too. In the yeah. States, we don't have a lot of black male educators either, yeah. so we can't expect to have a huge number of them here if they're not in the States either. Yeah, so and we that, need them, yes. period, in the educational world. I mean, we need the balance. And I know this is a little bit off topic, but since we're talking about the black male educator, yeah. um, just the fact of being seen changes stereotypes. It does. And it's very, very monumental, especially in other countries. Um, yeah. I was going to say, it seems like you had a little bit you wanted to say in regards to that. Or in, in regards to being over here? Yes, but just being a black male educator and yeah. being overseas and being over here. Yeah. What is that influence like? Um, I think I'm given a lot more respect over here. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the States, like we make up less than 2%. Mm -hmm. of the educators and I don't think that's an accident. Mm -hmm. I, I think people have a tendency to prefer women, mm -hmm. particularly white yeah. women, mm -hmm. to be teachers. You know, so we kind of get the short end of the state. But over here, it's more so about what are your credentials? Yeah. What skills do you bring? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, what can you do for us to improve our school? Mm -hmm. And I like that. So almost, oh. in my experience, 
exactly opposite of that here. Mm -hmm. It's not just your credentials and what you bring, it's mm -hmm. what your passport looks like yes. and what you look like, in yes. particular what color your hair is mm -hmm. or how straight your hair is. That's something that you know, I, I've battled with a lot. So mm -hmm. it's not just the credentials you bring, it's also you know the passport you carry is super important. But you know, as black educators, Americans here, we've got the passport part down. Yes. Yeah. You know? But the other part is sometimes another hoop you have to sometimes go through as well. So I'm going to fumble through this next question because you brought up an interesting point, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase it, but you also brought up an interesting point. And you brought up the fact that out here your credentials speak for you, and it's not necessarily walking into a stereotype, which I do feel in this day and age, being who we are, uh, being a child of a woman who is in the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. all we asked for was the opportunity to let yeah. our work speak for ourselves. Yeah. And I had the opportunity to let my resume speak for my credentials and put placement in there. And that is actually a very good feeling to have yes. mm -hmm. and a difference. But you do walk into the fact that because of our world is who we are, we we're kind of forever moment because yeah. people have taken over something. The right way sometimes seems like the white way, yeah. and you still have to fight that. So we are dealing with a stereotype, and I'll say this in regards to interviewing because we're going to interview it. It's not about your hair anymore. It's not about oh your perceived with an attitude. They just don't know. Yeah. So when you're selling yourself or when you're trying to talk to an employer, you do have to talk in a strong affirmation of you understand standards, exactly. you understand curriculum, curriculum. you understand yeah. students, yeah. you understand that because you, you are imagine. truly yeah. selling yourself. It's true. Yeah. And there's no assumption with that. Yeah. So let's go with that conversation and now say, okay, you're both in leadership. Mm -hmm. You have a candidate on the other end. What are you looking for to place into your schools? Mm -hmm. So for me, I do agree that curriculum is very important. We are an American curriculum <laughs> school. Yes. And we use the New York State standards, yes. which are somewhat different from the rest of the Common Core in the mm -hmm. U.S. So I do want someone who is versatile in Common Core, mm -hmm. but also has the flexibility to show that they can, you know, kind of maneuver in and out of, mm -hmm. you know, what standards are expected while, you know, um, falling in line with the, the Dubai kind of ministry standards as well. Mm -hmm. So for me, in terms of interviewing, I want someone who can articulate what a lesson plan looks like, how to lead a lesson, how to lesson start, mm -hmm. how does a lesson finish, mm -hmm. and you don't always get that. I mean, truly, when you're interviewing some people, sometimes they're clueless about how to write a lesson plan, how to align curriculum, especially for me, with the new school, we spoke a little bit earlier about, yes. you know, how, how you're how you're putting everything together from scratch. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for people who have experience building curriculum, aligning curriculum, mapping, all of those things. So when you can articulate those points, I'm, I, I want you. Mm -hmm. And I really don't care what you look like. <laughs> I want you to have those skills, and I want you to be able to move quickly and to be flexible, you know? So interviewing, you have to show me, and not just, not just um, tell me that you've done it, but be able to articulate what it looked like when you did it. Mm -hmm. So that's really what I'm looking for. Your resume showing that you can do it is mm -hmm. there, but once you get it on the, on, in, the, in the classroom or in the interview room, I want you to be able to show me how you did it. Give me some examples. And I think sometimes a, a, a candidate may feel concerned about the time that you have to interview. Yes. I'm much more interested in you giving me really solid examples of what you've done mm -hmm. when I ask a question. So if you can say how you aligned the <coughs> curriculum, how you supported your team, who you worked with, how it came together. Did you put it in Rubicon Atlas? Did you put mm -hmm. it in a Google map? Those mm -hmm. kinds of things are what I want to hear because I want to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to align the curriculum. <laughs> I'm hiring teachers to do that. So it is a lot of work, you know. So I want you to have that experience because I don't want to have to teach you and I have a ton of other things to do. This is what I need. So I want you to be able to articulate how you've done it and give me examples. So that's really important for me. Well, I think um, a common misconception is that students over here are more intelligent than students in the States yeah. or that they're more well behaved than students in the States. Um, I think the best applicant for a school over here is somebody who understands how to teach to ELL students. Oh, I love that you said that. As, yeah. as, as well as to ESL students. Yes. So the type of experience I would like for somebody to have is to be able to build ELL curriculum mm -hmm. maps, mm -hmm. ESL curriculum maps, um, as well as 
lesson plans for those two types mm -hmm. of instruction. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I don't really want to know how intellectual you are. Mm -hmm. I want to know how can you break all of that down mm -hmm. into small components, yeah. digestible bites, to be able to relay it to the children. Yeah. And then how well can you uh, facilitate them performing on those standardized yeah. assessments? Definitely. Because now the way the framework is created, assessments mean more uh, external assessments mean yes. more than progress. Mm -hmm. So attainment now it has mm -hmm. a lot of weight on how they uh, evaluate your school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to pause right there because I do have some questions that I, that both of you brought up. But we just said the words progress and attainment. That is very, very, very big in the yeah. national agenda. Yeah. Yeah. And when we talk about progress, we're looking at um, most schools are focused on map testing, mm -hmm. and I do believe that's something different in the states. Each state was able to pick and choose. Yeah. NWEA is all and be all. That is yeah. the number one test yeah. taking strategy that is utilized yeah. and strategized yeah. on. Yeah. And when we talk about progress, we're showing how the students grew based upon their expected work from the previous year to the current year. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole nother conversation yeah, on how to look at so. problems. And the other thing, <laughs> thing is attainment is looking at how many students attained at the 41st percentile and the 61st percentile. Yeah. So those two pieces in what you just brought up is very vital because that is how our schools are being evaluated mm -hmm. throughout KGA. Um, the other piece that you brought up, in, and I'm going to say it even though no one said the words directly, and it's a self-start. Mm -hmm. And I have received questions regarding, hey, I just graduated college, okay. I'm looking to come overseas, how, yeah. how liable is that? And for me, I would pause if you were a first year teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how that's looked at. And I'll tell you the reason why I pause, because there's so much work to be done yeah. that the training time that's usually there, I'm not able to give it to you or promise mm -hmm. it to you. Yeah. So it goes back to, what can you do on your own? But but I'm very sympathetic towards that mm -hmm. person because not too long ago that was me. Same right. And yeah. people mm -hmm. who were already in the season, the next season of life, mm -hmm. were like, nah, we yeah. won't give you a chance. Right. So then. So I, I, I believe in giving the person, the first timer, mm -hmm. a chance. Everybody always said, you don't have any experience. Mm -hmm. But then nobody wanted to give me a chance to get experience. Right. But it's like no matter how long you've been in the game, at some point you didn't have any experience either. You know, one thing I think this conversation with the two of us and you mm -hmm. is showing how different the needs are depending on the school that you're yes. in. Yes. So mm -hmm. your school is established more so than mine is. So yeah. what you're looking for and who you serve is very different. Yeah. The students who I'm accepting into my school right now, I think I have two who are Arabic speaking. Everyone else is English speaking. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay. that's one difference. When yeah. someone's interviewing, you need to know the school that you're getting yes. yourself into yeah. and to be able to cater your answers or your responses to what that school is looking for. Mm -hmm. And in speaking about hiring new teachers, because I'm developing a new school, it really depends on what yeah. the teacher's experiences have been. Mm -hmm. You know, if they just finished school, most teachers have done a year, mm -hmm. if not two years, of a practicum of some sort right. somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, and it really depends on what they can say. You know, perhaps I'm looking for people who can write curriculum. Mm -hmm. Perhaps in their student teaching practice mm -hmm. at the at the school where they did their practicum, they may be able to show me, listen, this is a curriculum that I wrote and that I built. Right. I'm young, I'm new, I'm fresh, I've had all these experiences. I wouldn't be against hiring that person. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the schools I was in previously, we had I had 100 teachers, mm -hmm. the school is upside down, mm -hmm. 17 teachers I believe before I got there, the year before I got there, 17 teachers left. Mm -hmm. I was not looking for any brand new teachers at that school because I needed people who had experience, who could come in and teach and I didn't want to have to groom anybody. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're looking to bring in a new teacher, you don't want to set them up for failure. So mm -hmm. you really want to be in a position where you can groom them. That takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So right now, because I'm building a school, I may have more flexibility and time to groom a new teacher. Mm -hmm. But when I was thrown in that school with all these brand new teachers, all these problems that I was mm -hmm. responsible for resolving, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had time. Yeah. So I would have been essentially throwing a new teacher mm -hmm. into a hot fire. And 
that wouldn't have been fair to her, to the kids, or to me. So I think you really have to understand as a, as a leader where you are. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is sometimes you just need a, a, a hot mm -hmm. body. And no one wants to hire mm -hmm. a hot body. You want highly qualified hot bodies. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you don't have an option, you know. Well, bringing that all together is that if you are a new teacher and you're looking, the key thing is, is in your interviews, it's not focused on what you have learned. It's focused on what you can do. What you can do. And what you bring yep. to the school. Yep. And so that's kind of where we're going yeah, there. If definitely. you're new, if you haven't had the chance before, um, your selling point is, I've done this. Maybe I've done this project. I've built these relationships. True. I've trained and applied. It's true. So that kind of piece. And you know, sometimes yeah. when you when, when I see a brand new CV, depending on where I am in mm -hmm. hiring, I may not even uh, entertain it. I may just put it to the side. Mm -hmm. So a person who wants to interview, who is brand new, mm -hmm. has to really sell themselves on paper. Mm -hmm. You know, in their cover letter, yes, I'm new, but I've mm -hmm. been responsible for these things. These are some success points that I've had. Mm -hmm. and I think often when you look at a CV, a CV will basically tell me a job description. Mm -hmm. I don't want a job description. I want to know what your accomplishments have been. Mm -hmm. And if you're a brand new teacher and you're trying to come and work with me, you may not have had your own classroom yet, or you may have had it for six months. Mm -hmm. In six months, I was able to use the map. Mm -hmm. this, this is how I did map. Mm -hmm. This is you know, what I brought to the map. This is how I supported the, 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 the seasoned teacher. So you really have to be able to sell yourself. Don't just give me a job description. I took attendance. Yeah, everybody <laughs> yes. does. You know, I want you to tell relationships. Yeah, yes. Yes, everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> so really tell me what value you would bring to my school as a new teacher, you know, and, and, and I mean, like you said, we've all been there. We've all been brand new teachers. Unfortunately, you know, my first interview, I was picked up. This was back in Maryland. So, you know, I've been teaching for a long time, but you really have to sell yourself in a way that shows what you have been able to do, what you can prove and show evidence of that in your cover letter, you know, that you've done these things. So that, that really is. I think what, what I need to see in a brand new teacher, I'm not against it either, mm -hmm. but I want, I, don't, I want to know when you come here, you're not going to be another burden. Right. And I'm, I'm not even really big on sitting face to face, mm -hmm. asking a bunch of questions, you answer the questions well, and then I say you're hired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like to take them into a classroom, mm -hmm. preferably a live classroom, mm -hmm. yeah. and say, teach. Mm -hmm. If possible. Show if me, possible. Yeah, if possible. Mm -hmm. But even if it's not, I'll get a few faculty members mm -hmm. and say, teach us. Well, and I'll say this, I actually did it um, in one of my most recent opportunities when I talked to somebody else, mm -hmm. is that be proactive enough to videotape yourself exactly. if you're there, because if you're doing an overseas exactly. interview to yeah. say, hey, um, you're able to do a private channel on YouTube, yeah. so if you want to see some of the things in action, yep. this Absolutely. is my class from February Absolutely. 2019. Yeah. Because Absolutely. the thing is, it's all about the application. Yeah. Yeah. So if you just turn around and get five, ten minute video yeah. and say, hey, um, I, I can give you this, yeah. you can check it out. because. Yeah. I do think there's a big wave going towards modeling in the classroom, yeah, definitely. Um, seeing what that looks like. Definitely. Um, but being proactive means so much more to everyone. That's true. I've had teachers do um, lessons that they had a, a mock lesson that mm -hmm. they had to create for me mm -hmm. and my team on Skype. Yes. Because they're in a whole other country. So mm -hmm. that was weird and different, but it, it really showed me how you prepared, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they made posters, they were colored, they put them on the walls, and although they didn't have children, mm -hmm. they were teaching me and my interview team mm -hmm. via Skype, and I hired that person because I was very impressed with how innovative they were and showing me I can do this, mm -hmm. you know. And I know that sometimes you see teachers who are, uh, well, they want me to do a Skype interview and a model lesson and I'm in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Well. The idea you had about you know showing a video, having a link mm -hmm. to a video that you've done yeah. or several videos that you've done, mm -hmm. that helps. And for me, as a as a person who who's responsible for hiring, I'd much rather click on the video and see you in action mm -hmm. than have you do a mock uh, mm -hmm. teacher teacher lesson um, mm -hmm. on Skype. I'd much rather that. So you're mm -hmm. your natural element. And, and to me, a red flag if somebody is supposed to be an expert in their content area. Mm -hmm but they seem not confident about mm -hmm. doing a demo lesson, yeah. yes. to me that's a red yeah. flag. Yeah, same here. Or well, if I say, teach us a lesson, and then you go, what do you, what topic do you want me to teach you? Mm -hmm. And I say any topic, topic within your subject, right. and you still don't seem confident yeah. about yes. it, it means that you're not yeah. spontaneous, well, yeah. you're not flexible. So I work, I work here in head of math, 
and one of my setups was that if you had a demo lesson, I would just give you a standard. Yeah. Because I don't know if you know how to read standards or not. And yeah. that is a very big, important true. piece. True. So I would just give you a standard and I would see what you would do from that standard. And I was open to questions, yeah. please, because I want my teachers to ask questions. Yeah. But I'm just giving, because we go back to curriculum. If you don't know how to read a standard, if you don't know the verbiage, if you don't yeah. know how to build rigor, I already know how much additional work that has to happen. Yeah. And you talked earlier about different schools. I was in a school that needed a lot of work, so yeah. I knew I could not have the time to train. Yeah. So that yeah. was always a big thing. So it's just those different yeah. pieces and looking at what's needed. So I'm going to take an interview question, and I'm going to okay. throw it back to you guys. Okay. And I'll give you a little second to think about it. But we always... One of the main interview questions is give me three characteristics about yourself mm -hmm. or give me three things. So in changing that question around, I'm just going to say, what are three things you need that person to be able mm -hmm. to have? You want to go first? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I need them to be, I'm, I'm more into, are you coachable? Mm -hmm. Your personality. Yeah. Um, so I need somebody that's coachable. Mm -hmm somebody that collaborates well mm -hmm. um i mean you want to roll with the seeds did you want to <laughs> collaboration yeah, so. creative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, creative. <laughs> and that's really actually a good one creative yeah. because sure. you're not going to teach the way you thought you were yeah, I, I really don't care how much you know mm -hmm. if the first time i come to zetha and say hey i know that's how you want to do it but I need you to do it this way, yeah. and now you have an attitude for yeah. the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't work. Because of it. It doesn't work here. And, and I've worked with many people like <laughs> yeah, this. True. And this is not necessarily an interview question, let's move back to yours, but it's also trust the people who've been here. Yeah. Because if you say, hey, I need you to teach it this way, um, and like I'll say, we know, oh, we know it's supposed to be this, 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 and this. Yeah. But sometimes you're getting guidance because we're in a different culture. Yeah. And, yeah. and if parents are used to this, yeah. it is better to do what this way exactly. versus true. the battle it's that true. you might have the other way. Yeah. True. So, yeah. okay. Your three. So, my three things are standard. I want hungry, humble, and smart. Mm -hmm. I want you hungry for student achievement. I want you humble enough to be able to be flexible, to do what's needed, and I want you smart to understand curriculum, families, you know, cultural needs, all those things. So anytime I'm asked that question, hungry, humble, and smart, and to be able to show what that looks like for you, because it looks different for everyone, you know. So hungry, humble, and smart. And, and somebody who, over here, you have to know and respect the Islamic culture, too. Yeah, I have to. If yeah, you try to disregard it because it's not your culture, yeah. you're going to end up in a world yeah. of trouble. Yeah, even so, deportation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's true. It's yes. true. So that's also... A, and that's for everywhere, not yeah. just here in the Middle East, mm -hmm. but anywhere you go, you need to kind of remove your American lenses, yes. your American experience, and, and try to go and learn. It doesn't mean you're going to be converted to anything. Right. This means you have to right. humble yourself to, to be able to work within the framework that you're being mm -hmm. presented to. When I ask somebody in an interview, do you, have you ever read the Quran? Mm -hmm. Have you ever studied it? Do you know anything mm -hmm. about it? If they seem offended by that, yeah, it's, red it's flag. probably a red flag that yeah. they won't get along too well with the parents, yeah. Yeah. the kids, and the children, yeah. and yeah. other teachers. Yeah. Yeah. So, like for example, if I tell a young lady, "Hey, listen, here you have to dress a certain way because the culture is very conservative. Mm -hmm. So, no, you know, you can't wear like spaghetti strap or a short skirt mm -hmm. or anything like mm -hmm. that." If you get offended by that, that probably means you won't work well. Yeah, go to another country. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, go to another country. So you need to be somewhere more Western where yeah. that's permissible. Mm -hmm. The thing about Dubai that's different from some of the other GCCs are Dubai is a little more free in terms of what you can wear, yeah. but not inside those schools. No, you know, yes. follow the school rules. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to turn up on Thursday night or Friday, do your thing. Hey, do your thing. But when you go to school, follow the rules. The dress code is important. And to me, it also shows respect. You know, And pushing that towards also the interview. Mm -hmm. That if it is a visual interview, respect. Yeah. And um, I, I won't say as a woman, but it's like overdress it. You don't yeah. know. Um, my school does allow short. You know, yeah. we can have that. But yeah. in an interview, I would not go that way. And I would you know definitely. what, too? 
Yeah. Not just in an interview. Mm -hmm. I've seen during Skype interviews yes. where the young lady had a picture of herself on her Skype profile oh, in yeah. a bathroom taking a picture and you could see all of her, her, you her goods. So I had to tell her, you know, as the interview ended, she's a mm -hmm. sister, so I was mm -hmm. trying to give her a little advice. Hey. If you're <laughs> going to be using this profile mm -hmm. for a professional, get a professional picture up there. Mm -hmm. And my profile is not professional. But it's not any. It's, it's very modest in terms mm -hmm. of what I'm wearing. I think that's important anywhere you are. You know, you mm -hmm. want to come across. You can have fun in your life, but you want to come across, uh, you know, modest. Well, I think know. the key thing is when we look at everything when we talk about interviewing for a potential employer. The very first piece is research. Yeah. Know where you're trying to go know what you're trying to do, know if you actually can work within that. Yeah. Because while we're talking about Dubai or UAE, not all countries are the same. You still can have an international yeah. dream, um, but it might be in a different location. Yeah. So yeah. it's all yeah. about yeah. the do research. Your homework is yeah. True. Yeah. And know then, where you're going, know what the expectations are. It's very true. Then I'll say, and then what you say also is respect where you're trying to go. So it's not only know, but respect to be able to do that and live within that. Yeah. Um, that actually is pretty much it for today. So I want to thank you no, one more time for awesome. spending this time yeah. with us. Awesome. Um, it's been awesome. I'd like to go ahead and raise a glass to the tea talks. Okay. Until next time. Until next time.